Okay, I'm going to be continuing with the current console generation, but first, I'm going to do a quick wrap-up of 06 because some people said that I omitted some things. First, the other characters. Knuckles' punches are a lot clumsier than they were in previous games, so it can be harder to hit enemies. Also, his glide sucks. It doesn't take him far enough. Amy, her Pico Pico hammer is once again her only means of attack, just like Sonic Adventure. But unlike Sonic Adventure, the hammer takes a painful second to come out when you swing it. I think this is because the game was so horribly slowed down, and they animated the entire arc of the swing. And even when you get it out, just like Tails' ring bombs, it's too short. You practically have to be overlapping enemy characters in order to hit them, so it's almost impossible to hit an enemy without getting hurt yourself. As for Omega, his cannon blasts aren't quite as easy to aim as E-102 Gamma's, but they still work fine enough. More importantly, he has the ability to fly. If you rapidly tap that jump button, what was intended to be a short-range glide becomes an infinite flight. Um, I'm not sure if that was accidental, or if the programmers did that on purpose to help compensate for the incredibly poorly placed platforms in the stages. Now Blaze... I have no complaints about Blaze. Not only does she feel the fastest and smoothest running character, her controls are the smoothest, her levels have the least amounts of glitches, and I can't help but think that whoever made Blaze really must have really liked her, because they made her stages the best. Except that they killed her off at the end of Silver Story, which kind of sucks. Now, about the story. A lot of people complained that it was full of plot holes and was no good. Um, it was a story about time travel. Anyone who watches an episode of Star Trek knows that time travel invites a lot of confusing things. Thing, you know, like Omega being in two places at once, or Chaos Emeralds existing in several places. You know, it's a, th those aren't plot holes. It's a story about time travel, people. Now, about the end of it, that I, I'll accept legitimate complaints about. Because it wraps up Sonic's end of the story pretty well. I mean... He and Elise end up 10 years in the past, where they find Solaris is a little candle flame, and Elise blows it out, causing Solaris to never exist, and this adventure never really happens. That's all well and good for Sonic, but what about Shadow and Silver, huh? It's like the developers forgot about them. I guess I can speculate that Shadow is just going on his daily life, because... Since Nephilus never existed, Rouge never went on a mission to find the Dark Scepter, and Shadow never would have gone on a mission to find her. So... That's okay for him, but what about Silver? I mean, he learned how to time travel from Mephilus, so without Mephilus, he logically shouldn't know how to travel through time. But, and yet, in the very next game, Sonic Rivals for the PSP, he's introduced as the Guardian of Time. How does he do that? He doesn't know how to time travel, he never met Mephilus. And, and what about Blaze? Is she still dead? Does the future now resemble the Rush universe? What's going on? They never bothered to explain that part. And that is what I don't like about the ending. It's not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just that it's freaking incomplete. Okay, I'm now done with Sonic 06, let's move on to the next one. Oh yeah, one more thing. Um, I guess fans are supposed to speculate what happened to Silver and Blaze, so I made up my own little theory about what their ending is supposed to be like. Check out the description on the right side to read that, because I'm not going to go into the whole details right here in this video. Okay, on to the next game of the current console generation. Sonic and the Secret Rings. This game waited until February of 2007 to come out, rather than whoring itself out at the holiday season, so it came through without any real glitches. Now the gimmick for this game is that it's the storybook series, and all the levels are arranged in chapters, like in a book. And the cutscenes, with the exception of two, the midpoints in the end, look like this. Um, it's supposed to be like reading a storybook, where you're given panels, and there's not much movement in them. But, I don't really like the way that the color's all washed out, and the drawing looks kind of rushed, a little too stylized for my tastes. I mean, they're, they're already going so far as to not properly animate them, so... You'd think that at least put a little bit more effort into the drawing. I mean, if you're going to have a bunch of still frames put up, you would damn well better make sure that those still frames are going to look freaking amazing. I mean, yeah, I, I understand why. I mean, 
this was a very experimental game. They didn't know quite what the Wii's capabilities were, so they didn't want to try and push the system too hard. But, you know, at least draw it a little better. That's my real complaint. Just draw a little better, man. Okay. Now, this game had a little another gimmick, which was gaining ex experience. You know, like, kind of like an RPG. And you also had these skill rings. As you gained experience, you also unlocked new techniques. And you use your experience points to equip these techniques to your ring, and that would allow you to get through the stages faster, easier, you know, make you stronger. Although I didn't really like this aspect of the game much either. It was a little tedious. I mean, look, here I am going through it, making sure I have all the techniques equipped, but I can equip the best technique that I can. But then I can't really equip them all because I don't have enough experience. So I had to play the game to get more experience so I can equip more techniques. But, you know, if you don't, especially early on, if you don't have these techniques, the game can be kind of irritating to play. Because, you know, when you first get it, Sonic doesn't steer very well. He doesn't run very fast. It doesn't attack very efficiently. And this is a game that... You know, it's an RPG in many ways. It has a lot of RPG elements, and you know, for a Sonic game, putting RPG elements into an action game, not sure that was the best decision. However, if you put the time in, the, the game actually gets pretty sweet. Sonic runs pretty fast, and he gets really easy to steer. Um, now, here's another thing. The game, Sonic runs forward automatically, and the camera's locked behind you. Okay. After dealing with that incredibly buggy camera from Sonic 2006, I'm sure having the camera just point in the direction that you want it to the whole game is really, really good. I mean, not having to deal with that buggy camera makes this style of gameplay really great. Um, well, it, yeah, it is, it is great. I mean, except, you know, it's all motion control. You tilt the Wii Remote to, to steer Sonic, and that's kind of awkward. Especially since he's running forward automatically, it can be pretty hard to dodge some things. See here, I keep running into these fire poles. I see them coming, but since I don't really have control over Sonic's speed, I can't really dodge. Also, backtracking is extremely awkward. I didn't like having to backtrack. And targeting enemies can be weird. See, I, I missed despite... They, they help you. Look, there's a targeting site that shows you when the homing attack will work. That That's uh, useful. It, it at least compensates for certain flaws. And you have abilities too. There's time break. Kind of reminds me of Prince of Persia. Everything turns black and white and moves a lot slower and this really helps especially in boss fights when you need to target precisely. And there's speed break which makes you run super fast and get